The Bad Album. Despite Thriller selling a lot more copies, and I mean a motherfucking shitload more, I still say Bad is the superior of the two, and frankly, I think most MJ fans would agree with me on this. Yeah, I actually think there's such a thing as common ground with me and other MJ fans. How about that, huh? Of course, I got sidetracked already. But anyways, the reason Thriller sold more despite being, in my opinion, the generally inferior album can be attributed to one thing. Motown 25. Thriller had Motown 25 to promote it, a televised special that was watched by millions. Bad had Moonwalker, I guess, but there's just no comparison here because for one, Moonwalker was a theatrical release in some countries and not others, which meant you had to pay to see it as opposed to just being home at the right time for Motown 25. And also, despite some clever animation and music videos, Moonwalker was a pretty subpar movie to say the least. No amount of Joe Pesci could save it. It's terrible, okay? Terrible. The only reason you watch it is for the dancing. Just admit it. If you watched Moonwalker muted, you'd be just as entertained as you would be if it wasn't muted. And that's a problem. Given Moonwalker's such strict and limited release, it's not even justifiable to call it a promotional piece for the Bad Album. And if it was, then MJ did a bad job. And yes, that was a pun. And a dumb one at that. Years ago, I noticed something that stood out on the album's photography. And as the years went on and different editions were released, one photo in particular had an evolution. And I think it's a bad one. That time, that was not a pun. Just pay attention. I'm referencing this image. Now for some of you, you're probably thinking, wait a second, I know this image, but it doesn't look right. Well that's because later on, the image devolved into this. I first noticed this when the special editions of the first four major epic records came out to promote the upcoming Invincible album. Oh yeah, Michael went all out for that album that he actually had Off the Wall, Thriller, Bad, and Dangerous all remastered, repackaged, and even some had bonus tracks. Except Dangerous. Dangerous was just given a new package, nothing too exciting. But this was where I first saw this asinine change start, and I'm dumbfounded that even to this day I'm still seemingly the only one who notices it. Go and Google this and tell me what you find other than nothing. So, which image is the original? Owners of the original bad release, such as myself, both on compact disc and vinyl, I can give you that answer. This one. Let's look at the minor changes they made. In the original, the silhouette across from Michael has a cigar in his mouth, while the newer edit removes the cigar completely and adds in a rather awkward ponytail. Another minor detail is the fact that the subtitle, Another Great Team, is gone, as well as any mention of Frank DeLeo in the original credits. Catching on yet? This has plagued my skeptic mind for years, until finally I broke down and emailed the credited photographer about it, and this was what he had to say about it. This doesn't surprise me at all considering his work. He doesn't seem the kind of artist to doctor his own work for no reason or any reason. But I also don't think Sony is the culprit here as he asserts. Given what is known about how Michael treated people he worked with, I have no reason to not suspect he had a gigantic hand in this absurdity. In J. Rainey Terraborelli's biography, he goes into good detail about the fallout between Michael and DeLeo. And by Fallout, I should mention that it was completely asymmetrical. How did it go down? Well, not to bring down the Jackson family, but... I really just don't like the Jackson family. I never have. And I'm glad Michael distanced himself from the majority of them once he reached his professional peak as a solo artist. 
Anyone who's followed this family even remotely can clearly see the self-inflicted leash the male majority of this family wore on Michael's popularity. Once the family band was disbanded for Michael to pursue his solo career, they've done literally everything they could to somehow get involved in his career. Not because they wanted to help or support him, but because they were going broke. A lot. When the Jacksons were unable to convince an already pissed off at his own family Michael from performing with his brothers in Korea for an ass load of money, keyword here is money, Korea actually put a bounty over Michael's head to get him involved. Not in the off with his head kind of way, but rather the first guy to coax him into participating in these shows wins a million buckaroos. This went on to be known as the Jackson Mooney Project. And it's just so stupid how desperate Michael's parents were to try and exploit him under the guise of family love. Seriously, side note, fuck the Jacksons. Except Janet, she's alright. As a last resort, after numerous hostile phone conversations with his greedy father and vanity camouflaged mother, the Jacksons decided to utilize Frank DeLeo to convince him that these shows were a good idea. Now I don't think Frank gets enough credit here as a manager. He knew Michael's nature as a worker and always represented it even to his dumbass family. In this situation however he was a bit of a centrist for whatever reason. He basically tried to make everyone happy. He promised the family he talked to Michael to make them happy and he'd at the same time acknowledge to Michael that he is aware of how he feels and asks that he just take his time in telling his family to fuck off. Okay, I may be exaggerating at that last bit, but I have to because even with all their greed and bullshit, the Jacksons are fucking boring. He asked him to think it over, and then say no. Tell me how much better that actually sounds than how I described it. Anyways, this led to Frank's termination, which Michael couldn't even do himself. Now it can't be proven that the Jackson Mooney Project was the sole culprit behind this, though I have no incentive to believe it wasn't part of it. Michael was quoted as saying to an associate, Frank isn't even creative. Let's face it, I come up with all the ideas. I believe that's what artists are supposed to do, Michael. I think it's called work in your world. Sorry, but that train of thought just does not impress me. That's why you're called an artist. Anyways, another beef Michael had with DeLeo was Bad's successful unsuccessfulness. By that paradox, I mean the album was a success, but not a thriller killer kind of success like Michael wanted. Which, I want to again stress, yes, it was a thriller killer. It just happened to be sympathetic at the time it came to killing it and showed mercy. What do you expect when your album cover just has a frail man posing in an assumed stance meant to symbolize toughness, while the cover you're trying to kill features the same man with a TIGER? And that odd arrangement with Moonwalker I mentioned earlier about it not being theatrically released in the United States? Yeah, that was also apparently Frank's fault too. You can see a pattern here, I admit. Michael thought he was a subpar manager and fired him. The bullshit with Michael's family was just the last straw on the camel's back. Most likely Michael viewed this as him trying to represent two opposing Jacksons instead of just one Jackson. And in a very manipulative and rather awkward way at that. I personally do not blame him at all here, but that's not what this video is about. This video is about this photograph. Come on, help me out here. Was what Frank did or his management quality really worth completely destroying his image, literally, like this? Do you think Michael pulled this stunt as a disturbing way of telling his family how he felt about them trying to use his own people against him? And at the same time send a message to Frank himself about trying to get in between family affairs? Maybe a bit of a stretch. But given the circumstances and these ridiculously minor yet very influential modifications to this photograph, and the complete removal of Frank DeLeo's name from the album's credits, 
I just don't see what else it could be. Now, when Bad 25 was released, Frank was actually put back in, in several photos, in fact, of the album's booklet. But this was released after Michael had died, and oddly enough, after Frank himself had died. That clearly had to be his estate acting alone on that decision. Even though once they started releasing bad standard editions again, the doctored photo was put back in. And its name? Still out of the original credits. In this case is gonna give me a headache. I don't know what to think. I just know it's seriously disturbing and has caused me to have a lot of reserved opinions on Michael's character. I mean, in addition to the opinions I've already had. What do you all think about this? Let me know in the comments. Or don't. I don't know. I was mainly the only one who noticed this apparently, so perhaps I should suffer from this alone as well. <sighs> Anyways, until next time.